So a few weeks back, I asked my friend what I should code, and she said Minesweeper. But I mean, coding Minesweeper in itself is kind of easy, so I decided to make it a bit more challenging. And I decided to make Minesweeper in the world's most superior game engine, Microsoft Excel. No kidding, it's even better than PowerPoint. Now sure, the graphics are not flashy, but the functions are all there. You can click on squares, you can plant flags, you can clear areas, and you can even do the fancy double tap on the number thing. You know, the thing that reveals uh, all the empty squares around one area. Uh, the only feature it doesn't have is the question mark, but I mean, who even uses that? It's kind of funny, it only took me about three hours to create this. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how amazing Excel is. You know, the coding was so intuitive, there were certainly no bugs, and I most definitely did not get a blue screen of death while creating this. So what a lot of people don't know is that Excel actually has this developer tab at the top, uh, but it's actually usually hidden and so you have to go into options and allow it on the ribbon. And what this tab allows you to create is not only macros, but also scripts. And that's kind of what I'm going to be using today. So if you open up scripts, you get this window called Visual Basic for Applications. Uh, I think that's the name of the coding language, I'm not 100% sure. Either way, it's a mouthful, so I'll just use VBA from now on. Anyway, here's an if statement in VBA, and here's an if statement in Python. So you can see that VBA is basically just an even more English version of Python, which is, uh, I mean, if it suits you, then go ahead. So the cool thing about VBA is that you can actually access different parts of the Excel sheet and edit them. So for example, here's a piece of code that just turns every square that you select green. Uh, that's already pretty cool, right? So it's an event listener which waits for the selected cell to change and then gets your mouse position and edits that cell. So first of all, I'm pretty bad at VBA, so I had to look up some other tutorials on how to work in it, and I actually found this Minesweeper clone, but it didn't really work for me. It just displayed some error and didn't want to explain it, which is something VBA really enjoys doing. Like, it tells you there's an error, but it doesn't tell you which line it's on. So, like, what? Anyway, we have to start from scratch. Really, Minesweeper is quite a simple game. You create a 2D array, randomly fill it up with mines, and then you go through all of the squares and count how many mines there are around them, editing the corresponding spot in the array to that value. That's basically what this piece of code does. Now, an array is really just a piece of data within the VBA script. It's not actually displayed on the sheet. But I mean, fixing that is quite easy. So first of all, we do some basic aesthetic changes, just change the cell height and the cell width, and then we make the actual playing grid a bit darker. Now when you click on a cell, it fires this event, and uh, ignore this random code here, the most important piece is this. These lines set the value of that cell of the Excel sheet, so the text inside of it, to the corresponding value inside of the array. And so that allows you to uncover squares, I suppose. There is a special condition, and that's if the square has no number, and so a bigger area is going to have to be uncovered. In that case, we just go through all of the squares around the clicked on square, and we actually call a select function. So we make Excel think that we clicked on those squares. And this makes the select function recursive, and it basically continues calling itself until it finds a square with a number. So that eventually will clear the whole area. And it's pretty satisfying to watch. Okay, now we just add a condition for when you click on a mine, and hey, we have the endgame condition. So now let's probably talk about flags. Flags were a painful feature to implement, because I have no idea how to check if a selection was made with the right mouse button. So I found this piece of code online, I have no idea what it does, but it didn't work anyway, so that's okay I guess. As per usual, I studied what I could have done wrong for like 3 hours, only to realize that you're supposed to be putting this into a different file? 
I have no idea why, but okay, sure. Uh, we have flags now, yay! Oh, and the win condition is fired when you flag all of the mines correctly, so that's also pretty cool. Final function I had to add was double clicking, and to be honest I kind of cheated since I don't think it's even possible to check for a double click, so I just fire the double click condition when you right click on a square with a number, which is a really cheaty solution but it works, so well. It's just an if statement, if the amount of flags around the square corresponds to the number on the square, it just selects all the squares around it, opening them up if they're not flagged. Now here a funny thing happened, I somehow called the selection function more recursively than usual, I don't know, don't ask me, but then my computer lagged for like 10 minutes and I ended up getting a blue screen of death. First one in my life and it happened because of a fracking program made by the people who made the operating system. That's kind of ironic. The last thing I did was coloring the numbers, which was honestly really simple, and I also added these game settings to the right of the board. R stands for run or reset, under that you have the amount of mines you want, and under that is the size of the grid. And well, that's it, Minesweeper in Excel. In all honesty, I'm probably never doing something like this again, but it was kind of fun. Theoretically, if you wanted, you could most certainly make a more complicated game, but uh, that's quite a bit of work. Here you can see this very basic thing I put together where you can move around the black square and collect points. So, you know, if you're up to that and have no life, then go ahead. I'll try to publish the files within the next few days. I'm not sure how, but I'll figure it out. And also, life is life, so maybe it will take a bit longer, but nonetheless, I wish you a pleasant day. Bye-bye.